Hi everyone, welcome to Paint with Plaid. We are super excited you're here for tonight's painting. Mm -hmm. If you're new to Paint with Plaid, it's our series of Facebook live streams where we teach you how to paint a painting in just about an hour. Tonight we're featuring folk art paint and we're really excited to have Jesse leading us through peace, love, and avocados. So uh, if, you're, if you are new to Paint with Plaid, there's a couple things you need to remember. The first is we would love to see your paintings. Use hashtag Paint with Plaid to share those with us on our Facebook page here or on Instagram or any other social channel. Once again, it's hashtag paint with plaid. And if you're not able to have your supplies ready with you right now, you can always replay this video on demand on our Facebook page. And we also typically upload it to YouTube within 48 hours. So without further ado, let's get ready to walk your world <laughs> and paint peace, love and avocados with Jesse. Yay, okay. So let's get started. So the supplies you should have for tonight um, is your 12 by 12 inch canvas. Um, you're going to want to have this um, avocado printout that you can get from um, our Facebook page. The brushes you're going to be using are the 3 4 angle brush. We're going to have our half inch angle brush. And then we have our number 8 round brush. Um, I also have a ruler, a pencil, and an eraser for um, the technique that we're going to do using this printout. And then the colors we've got, we've got um, our folk art acrylics. We've got burnt sienna, olive green, yellow citron, wicker white, bright pink, and a citrus green. So let's get started. So the first technique I'm going to show you um, is how to do a grid drawing. And this is a really simple technique that a lot of beginner artists use, but also a lot of advanced artists use this too for um, drawing and painting. It helps with your to make sure that your placement is right. Um, so let's get started. So what we want to do, we can see here we've got um, our 16 squares in the grid. So um, you can do this any photo that you print out if you want to use a, an original photo or find one online that you like that you want to draw or paint. You can either draw a grid onto it or you can fold it to make these this grid shape so make it make sure it's nice and even. Um, so we're going to recreate this grid onto our canvas. So since you have a nice 12 inch canvas, it's going to be pretty easy tonight. I'm going to start by drawing notches. We need, you know, three lines, one, two, three. So I'm going to make a notch at the six inch mark, the three inch mark, and the nine inch mark. And you want to do this on each side of your canvas. I'm going to turn mine around to make it a little bit easier. So three, six, nine. And so if you were going to do some sort of um, rectangular composition, you could do that too. You'll just have to do a little bit of math to make sure that your proportions are right when you're enlarging it for your canvas, your grid. Oops. Three, six, nine. Okay, so now that I have my notches on um, all four sides, I'm going to go ahead and use my ruler to um, connect these lines. But you want to make sure you use a really light touch so that when we go over it in a couple minutes with our paint, you're not going to have trouble covering it up. So just a nice light line, just enough so you can see it. And this will make sure that all of our proportions are really nice, that all of our avocado shapes will make it a little easier. You'll see how we'll, we'll use this to draw. And if you don't happen to have the printout just yet, you can mm -hmm. actually find the link to that in the comments if you're watching us live or yeah. if you're watching the replay, we'll have that in the comment section below as well. Mm -hmm. You can find the complete supply list of all the folk art products you need as well as the photo printout that Jesse is using right now. Yep. Okay, so now that we have our grid, you can see um, it pretty much matches our printout. We've got the same number of squares. We're going to start and draw our photo square by square so that we can make sure that all of our um, proportions and all of um, everything is nice and accurate. So I'm going to start with this square here and I'm going to start it in the upper left hand corner and you can see I'm just going to sort of draw this right here and kind of pay attention to where it crosses over the lines to make it a little easier. So it kind of goes right around here and I'm just going to draw that shape there. See, it's much easier to draw a tiny little piece than it is to try to get it correct on your whole, on your whole canvas. So we're going to do it square by square and it should make it a little bit easier for you guys. So I'm going to start with this next one right here. That line sort of continues here and ends. So we're going to stretch it out across. 
And then I've got some lines going from here to there. And this really does not need to be perfect, so um, we don't have a ton of time to spend on it, but that's okay, because we're gonna go ahead and paint over it anyway. Um, and if some lines are end up kind of strange and you're not in love with them at the end, like I said, we're gonna paint over them so that it can always be changed later. I'm gonna go into the next one, and you're gonna continue this for the whole layout. I'm gonna kind of ignore the skin because I just kind of like the bright green part of the avocado. Mine are gonna be a little bit flatter, um, but it's up to you. If you wanted to keep that thick skin, that's sort of that dimension, you can do that too. So we didn't actually plan this for this week, but it just so happens National Avocado Day yes. was Tuesday. So we're just still celebra celebrating. We I are. had some guacamole tonight. <laughs> you did, yeah. I did. It's really good. That was good timing. And we've been seeing avocados everywhere. Jesse's part of our yeah. design team and there's been... Mm -hmm. Avocados are definitely trending right now. That is for sure. I love avocados. It's kind of a fun like end of summer painting too, I think. It is, I love the bright colors and you could even customize the background yeah. if you wanted something other than the pink, which looks really fun against the avocado. I think Definitely. some of our painters here tonight at Platt are doing some customizing. So yes. it's really fun because yeah. these paintings you can do in about an hour and you can also customize right. however you want. It's your painting, you can do it however you'd like. It's nobody's but yours, that's kind of the fun of it. Um, and as you can see here, I started drawing sort of the um, divot of this avocado where that seed used to be. So make sure you get those in as well, because we're going to include those in our painting. I'm just moving right along. I don't want to spend too, too much time on it, so you have more time to add the pretty colors. And if you're watching live, let us know in the comments if this is your first time to paint with plaid. You can actually also replay previous paint nights on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel, which is Plaid Crafts. So be sure to check that out and follow us if you're not already to get notified of the latest paint with plaid nights they're a lot of fun yeah i love them i mean i've been to all of them um it's my first time teaching but i'm really excited <laughs> okay we're just gonna finish it up here at the bottom we're in our last row and don't forget it really doesn't need to be perfect we're just gonna do nice light pencil lines so we have a really good idea of where um all of our avocados are we have a nice Nice, neat composition. And this is a technique you could use to replicate like any other Absolutely. photograph as well, right, Jesse? Absolutely. Jessie? Yeah, I know a lot of people who, you know, even do portraits this way. They do all kinds of painting. So any sort of photograph, like I said, you know, even if it's not a square, it could be a rectangle. You can either fold it and make your own grid or just, you know, take a ruler and a pen and draw over it. You can use this for any photo. It's a really nice way to draw from life, which is not always easy. Yeah, that's a great technique. So I'm going to take my, um, eraser real quick a lot of you know I'm sure you have a eraser at the end of your pencil and I'm just gonna sort of lighten some of my grid lines a little because I don't need those anymore but I'm gonna keep my avocado lines and if you don't have an eraser uh, out with you right now that's okay you can leave the grid lines it's not gonna be a big deal we're just gonna cover up with paint this is just to make it a little easier <coughs> and as Jesse is erasing some of the grid lines. I'm just gonna show y'all really quick, just over here above you, Jesse, just so you can, everyone can kind of see that it's just now joining us. This is what Jesse is helping us to paint tonight in just about an hour. Yeah. We are doing paint with plaid tonight featuring folk art and Jesse's just te teaching us a great technique yeah. using a grid method to kind of get our base for mm -hmm. the painting. Yep, nice and simple. So now you really should have a really nice avocado composition. You know, you can kind of, now is the time too where if you, one's a little funky or you want one to be rounder than another one, you can go ahead and change it up. Um, like I said, it's your painting, so that was just to help you get the general shapes of it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start painting, the fun part. So the first color that you're gonna wanna put on your palette um, is this Folk Art Acrylic Bright Pink. And I'm going to put about a quarter size amount on my palette. I just have a sheet of palette paper here, but you know, you can use a plate if you'd like to. I'm gonna start with my 3 fourths angle brush and I'm gonna get it wet a little bit just to remove any sizing from it. You want it to be nice and clean and soft. So I'm gonna go ahead and load my brush with the bright pink. I've got some eraser crumbs on here. Load my brush with the bright pink and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start painting around my avocado shapes. So you just want a nice um, steady coat a nice even coat of bright pink around your avocados. 
do a quick coat. And again, it doesn't matter um, when you go right up to the avocado lines right now, we're gonna fix those later. So if they're like a little wonky or you know you overlapped it a little or you didn't go close enough, don't even worry about it. We're just trying to get some pink in here. If it's not perfect, that's fine. You can see how I'm kind of holding my brush upright to get into some of these little areas, which is really great with these angle brushes. Kind of gets into the, the detailed parts. And then I'm using my flat brush to fill in the larger areas, the flat side. And Jesse, it's really fun. We have a lot of first time viewers with us. Hello awesome. to Lottie, Lottie and Shannon and also Mary Nell. Welcome, y'all. Okay. We're so excited that you're avocado fans and also Paint with Plaid fans yes. as well. Very exciting. And we're featuring our folk art paint. And I know this, this formula is very creamy to mm -hmm. use. Oh yeah, it's super creamy. I love painting with the folk art paint because you can see even on my palette, you can see just how thick and creamy it is and how it moves really nicely on the canvas. It's so, so pretty. And this, I love this bright pink color. It's really fun for summer too. It's gonna be awesome with the green, you'll see in just a, just a minute. Just filling in the back here. All right, thanks everyone for all the thumbs up that you're sending us. If you haven't already, we'd love for you to share this video if you're watching us live with someone that you know either loves avocados or loves painting. I mean, or loves both. Everyone in this yes. room here loves both. <laughs> We're big avocado fans here at Plaid. Or even let us know your favorite way to eat the avocado. Yes. I definitely am a big avocado toast fan mm. myself. I was gonna say any guacamole recipes, please share. Okay, you can see I'm not even being that careful with this pink layer right now. I just wanna get a nice, nice coat there on the back, make sure it's all pink. I've gotten all the areas where the avocados are not, are now pink. Okay, just smooth that out a little. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just set my brush carefully down on my palette because I'm gonna leave the pink on there. I'm gonna grab some of our wicker white and I'm gonna put about a quarter size amount on my palette. I'm not even gonna clean my brush. You, you might wanna wipe off just a little bit of the paint so you don't have a ton, but I still have pink on there. I'm gonna put some white on my brush and I'm gonna start adding it to the top area of the pink, toward the top of my canvas. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create an ombre effect, blending the pink so it's gonna be a light pink at the top and then it'll go down to our really pretty bright pink at the bottom. And just blend it in. You can do sort of a crisscross motion if you like it a little more painterly or you can go nice and smooth. Um, and again, you don't have to worry about when you get right up to the edge of the avocado. That's not really that important right now because we're gonna go back later um, once we start painting the avocados and we can smooth that out a little. So you just wanna make sure you get all the pink mixed in and avocados always different shapes right exactly Especially that's what's fun about this organic ones exactly avocados there's no two are, that are the same because you know they're fruit they're organic so no matter how you make it it's going to be right i'm sure there's an avocado out there shaped like that somewhere <laughs> i'm going to keep adding pink and as you can see i'm adding a little less pink as i go down i mean i'm sorry a little less white as i go down um, so, because you want to keep the bottom really bright. So I have a really light pink up here and then sort of a medium pink towards the center. And this is kind of a good trick too. Um, if you have a paint and it's looking a little more transparent on your canvas and you can see that there's some um, canvas texture showing through, if you add a little white to it, it really helps to make it more opaque. As you can see here, you know, some of our pink was looking a little bit thin there um, just because it's such a bright color, but this is making it nice and creamy and smooth. We're gonna bring it down just a little bit and then we're gonna leave that pink at the bottom. That looks so great how it gives kind of a texture to the painting. It does, yeah. Katie, yeah. thank you for the great avocado emojis. Perfect <laughs> avocado <laughs> emoji use. Awesome. Okay, so when you've got that the way you like it, oh, I made a little too much pink there. You can go ahead and clean off your brush. I like to get my brush really clean between colors, so feel free to change your water out in between too if you feel like it's getting muddy. I always do. So have a clean brush. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna it's going to go ahead and grab our half inch angle brush, which is the smaller of the angles, and we're gonna get it wet to get rid of that sizing again, and then dry it off a little. Prep your brush, and then we're going to put on some some citrus green onto our palette just about a dime size amount. You can always add more later. And then we're gonna put a little bit of our yellow citron. 
right next to it. Again, about a dime size amount. It comes out so nicely, it's so creamy. <clears throat> okay, so you can see I've got my white, my citrus green, which is the uh, middle of the two greens, and then my yellow citron, which is the lighter of the two. And they do seem pretty similar. You're probably wondering why we have two such similar greens, but you can see once we start putting them onto the avocado um, that they actually really are different. And I'll remind you which, which one we're using, the lighter or the darker one, just because they are pretty similar and even the names are kind of similar. We're going to start with our darker, or I'm sorry, with our citru cit yellow citron. I'm already confusing myself. And we're going to load up our brush, our half inch angle. And we're going to go just like kind of right in the middle of our avocado. So we're not touching the the seed and we're not touching the outside. We're just kind of going in the middle. If that makes sense. Does not need to be perfect. We're just sort of using the, the width of the brush as a guide for how wide we want our little area to be. And use a, use a generous portion of paint. Because what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add all of our greens and some white and that's going to make sort of that blended, beautiful avocado shading. And we're going to do this for each of our avocado shapes. That's like basically the most perfect avocado <laughs> color ever. Isn't it? I know. It is just so perfect. I absolutely love this color. I almost got my nails painted this color and then I was like, you know what? It might be a little much. So I went with the neutral instead. <laughs> hey, and we can take a look at the painting if anyone is just now joining us we are doing uh peace love and avocados we're teaching you how to paint this in just about an hour as part of our paint with plaid series we're featuring folk art tonight this is a really really fun painting especially because it was just national avocado day Ooh. so we are walking around tonight <laughs> lots of fun with jesse and uh we are now painting with our folk art our uh, avocado base color yes okay so this is again this is the um yellow citron that we're using the lighter of the two greens um, so I've kind of gone around the seeds or where the seeds, you know, used to be in some of the avocados. Um, and don't forget about this one on the side. Even though we can't see the seed, you know, we know that they're going off the canvas. There would be a seed there. So you want to make sure we include green there too. Kind of try to think about what is off the edge of our painting. And if you want to add a little up here too, there'd be a seed up there. So we can add a little there too. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wash my brush. And then I'm going to load my brush with some of this citrus green, which is the darker of the two greens. And I'm going to start going around the edge. And right just outside of where I put the yellow citron. You see that? So our, our pink might still be a little bit wet, but that's okay. Um, we just want to go sh right up until the pink. We don't necessarily want them to touch. Um, and if you have some white in between, that's totally fine because later on we're going to go and paint the shell of the avocado, that very, very end of the avocado, kind of the skin, um, and we'll cover that up. So if there's some, so you can see I have even some white on mine showing, and that's totally fine. I'm just doing the same thing that I did with the yellow citron, but right around the outside. And the painting, I feel like the painting looks like kind of a mess now. <laughs> you can see that they're definitely going to be avocados, but You'll see when we start painting the details, after we get all of the base colors in, um, and after we smooth them out, it's really gonna come together. It's kind of a, the fun part. The colors, Wendy, thank you for your comment. Wendy loves the color combination. Yay. I do too, I love the hot pink against the Isn't green. And folk art, this is our folk art acrylic formula, but we have a ton of specialty formulas as well. You can literally find any color you want in the folk art line. Oh my gosh, it is so easy to find any color you want. That's why it was so easy when I started painting avocados, it was so simple to just find the absolute perfect colors. I didn't need to mix any colors. I could just find them right in the bottle. And if you do hit some of the pink and the pink's wet, you can just wipe your brush off because um, we don't want to you know, blend the pink into our green. That would make brown. We're going right up against the edge. We're making sure if you need to add some more green to your palette, oh, feel free to do that. We want to keep it kind of generous, like I said um, when we were starting. We want to use generous layers of green because we're going to be blending these. I'm actually going to add some more green to my palette. So I'm running out a little. 
We have a lot of avocado fans out there to see. And I mean, I'm kind of excited. I've never said avocado so many times <laughs> <laughs> within like an hour. So. I know. <laughs> Probably more times than you'll say in your life. Probably. Actually, speaking of, kind of good time for a fun avocado fact. Oh, please. I know. This is a surprise that I actually have one, Jesse. <laughs> um, I was just reading about National Avocado Day and mm -hmm. the world record for the largest avocado is five pounds, 3.6 ounces. Really? That's a giant avocado. Oh my gosh. So if your avocado is that big, you could basically do one for your whole painting. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of awesome. Yeah, you'd probably need a big canvas too. You would need a giant canvas. <laughs> okay. So now I've got my two greens in there right up to the edge, just butting up to it. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean my brush. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna grab some of my white that's already on my canvas. If you need some more of the wicker white, go ahead and add it now. Um, and I'm gonna do the same thing again, it's kind of repetitive, right on the inside of my green citron, around the seeds or around where um, the seed used to be, the little seed cavities. So following that line. And if you get some of your, your green into the paint, don't even worry about it because we're gonna be blending it in a minute anyway. So that's fine. See how I'm just going right over it? I'm not worried about it. Oh, we just quickly, there's a couple people just now joining us. We'll just take a quick peek, Jesse, as you're filling okay. in some of your av avocado. Yeah. Someone's asking about the finished painting. So if we should take, take a quick look at it. We're painting Peace, Love, and Avocados tonight with Jesse. She's te teaching us how to paint this in just about an hour. If you're watching live and you happen to not have supplies with you just yet, you can always replay this video on demand as well as some of our previous paint nights, including our last one, which was painting a really fun beach scene, which was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You can replay any really of our past beautiful. nights. And again, tonight is peace, love, and avocados. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush again. You can see I like cleaning my brush a lot. I like to start fresh. Um, and what we're gonna do while our paint is still wet is we're gonna start blending them. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and I'm gonna start um, from the outside and go in. If you need to add a little water to your brush, we can go ahead and do that because some of your paint might have dried already since we were spending some time doing it. But I'm just gonna blend the greens together and see, I'm even hitting my white there, that's okay. Add a little water to my brush to keep it smooth. I'm gonna be blending these greens together, making sort of an ombre gradient effect of the greens and making it look that really beautiful, the way that a really perfectly ripe avocado looks, um, right when you slice it open, those bright greens. I'm actually gonna add a little more green of my yellow citron here to thicken it up a little. And you wanna do really big, long strokes if you kind of stop in the middle that's where you get those you can see those marks and that's okay too i kind of like those marks but if you'd rather have it smooth you just want to use really big strokes and we're going to do this for all of our avocados in the painting I'm just using a tiny bit of water where i need it if you feel like your brush is dragging a little bit because the paint has dried a little you can go ahead and wet your brush. Jesse, do you have any other good tips if you happen to have a painting mistake, what should you do? Yeah, well that's kind of the good thing about painting, especially with acrylic paint, is that if you feel like you have a mistake, there's kind of no such thing. Um, you could either wipe it away really easily with a paper towel or a cloth, or you can just wait for it to dry, it'll just be a couple minutes, and then paint right over it. I don't think there really is such thing as a mistake when it comes to painting, especially with these paints. They're really forgiving. That's why I like painting with them so much. Awesome, that is looking so good. And we have a lot of people absolutely loving the color combination. Yay. I'm so glad. A lot of first timers as well. Awesome. Okay, so now that we've blended our two greens together, I'm going to go in and I'm going to start blending um, the white into that too. Remember we did that third stripe of white. I'm going to blend it into my yellow citron. And what the white does is you're probably thinking, well, you know, avocados aren't white, but this adds kind of a highlight to the center and it lightens up our green to create that value scale. So we've got the white mixed with the yellow citron and we've got the yellow citron and then we've got the citrus green. So it creates sort of a, a gradient effect. 
And Jesse, what brush are you using? I am still using the, um, the half inch angle brush. Okay. But you could use a bigger one too. If you feel like your, your lines are getting a little streaky, you can feel free to switch over to the, um, to the 3 fourths angle brush too. That'll just give you some wider strokes. There's kind of no rules. Blend in the widen. So if, if, if you're watching live and do have a question, just let us know in the comments and Jesse will answer Please it do. for us. If you have any questions about this uh, painting, great comment from Linda. She likes that the paints are easy to clean up. Yes, they're super easy to clean up. Um, when they're wet, you can just go ahead and use, you know, water and they wipe away really easily. I love these paints. Like you were saying before, the colors, they just have so many colors um, to match everything you can do. I feel like anytime I'm like, oh gosh, I need to match this paint. And you know, it's gonna be so hard to find one. With folk art paint, it's always so easy because there's so many color choices. I've never had any issues finding any sort of colors that I wanted. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some more um, of our, cause you can see in some areas it's getting a little streaky. I'm gonna add some more of the citrus green, which is the darker of our two greens, just to thicken it up a little and smooth it out. And we're gonna add that to the edge where we had it before and sort of blend it in. Jesse, what other techniques are good for this special fork art uh, angle brushes that you're using? Um, yeah, there's a lot of techniques you can use for this. Um, like we did before when we were painting the pink background, it's really nice because it kind of has the benefit of a flat brush where you can use it flat and it spreads things and smooths things really nicely. But you can also kind of use it as like a round brush or a detail brush because you can just use it upright and get into you know small areas um, and create small details. So it's kind of like when you have one of these, you kind of almost don't need a lot of other brushes when you're painting with one. If you have a couple sizes of these, you're kind of good to go. And there are two, two brush sets in the supply list, the mm -hmm. angle brush and the lettering and detail brush, which we'll get to later. Yep, yeah, we're gonna use the, um, the round detail brush in just a couple minutes. And quick question from Wendy, mm -hmm. what size canvas and did you treat it first? Um, I am using a 12 by 12 inch canvas and actually I did not treat it first. No, with these um, folk art acrylic paints, you really don't need to treat it. They just kind of glide on and they almost sort of treat it for you. Cause a lot of people might want to treat it with like an acrylic gesso, um, but it's really not necessary for these. Oh, I got a little pink in there, but that's okay. And if you happen to have a different size canvas, I'm just gonna show everyone your the grid. Sure. Yeah. So, sorry, with okay. the, the grid, I feel you could actually use this for any different size canvas Absolutely. too, right? If yeah. you wanted to, uh, like a bigger one. Mm -hmm. Oh, 100%. As long as you keep the proportions the same. So right. I could do this on a, you know, a four by four canvas or I could yeah. do it on a, you know, any size, especially if it's a square, um, you just divide it evenly. And that's how, what makes it really easy to sort of scale things up or scale things down. Again, like I said, when we were doing the grid, if you were gonna switch it to like a, uh, to a, rectangular canvas that's definitely doable it just need to do a little or be a little bit of math involved <laughs> trying to figure out what the proportions cool. would be thank goodness for calculators yeah <laughs> exactly calculators and rulers <laughs> our best friend and like you said i'm just adding a little more green in here to smooth it out but okay this yellow citron is my favorite i just love how bright it is Okay, smooth it a little more. I'm a perfectionist, so I sometimes don't know when to stop. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. I'm gonna clean my brush. Get a new paper towel under there. Thanks, Deanna. So the next step, now that we've got all of our green put in, um, I'm gonna take the, actually I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna start with my, um, three-fourths angle brush. I'm gonna put a little bit more citrus green on my palette because I've run out. And I'm going to fill in these two holes right here where the 
you know, avocado seed used to be, sort of these cavities. And I'm just gonna do one even layer, just that shape, that circular shape that we drew in with our grid. And nothing fancy here, just painting it plain green. We're gonna go ahead and add some um, details later to make it dimensional. Right now we're just painting the circle, circular shape. But you do wanna make sure that um, while we're doing this, you get up to your edges and make sure your edges are um, how you want them because we're not, gonna, we're not really gonna change the edges of this shape like we're gonna do with the avocado. Um, this is kind of how it's gonna be. So make sure the edges are how you want them. I kind of have mine going off the canvas here, so I'll make sure I do that. You just want a nice, even coat of citrus green. And like I said, we're gonna do that for both of our, our empty avocados. That's looking so good. And if someone, for some reason, wanted their avocado pits, seeds, mm -hmm. and yeah. all of them, they could even recreate that on Absolutely. all of them. I love the look of just the one. Yeah. Um, I kind of like the look of the one, too, because it just adds, like, one little area of dark and, yeah. like, sort of a red-brown. Um, but, yeah, you can definitely, once I show you how to paint the avocado seed, you can put them in all of them, or you can leave the seed out totally and just make all of your avocados empty. It's kind of up to you. Again, it's your painting. It's, there's no rules. So I'm gonna clean my brush off. And now I'm going to add a little bit, oh, I'm splashing, a little bit of the burnt sienna to my palette, just about a dime sized amount. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I just did for the um, avocado cavities, but I'm gonna do it for where the pit's gonna go. So just one little even layer of burnt sienna. And again, I'm gonna make sure that I have my edges how I want them because those aren't gonna change really. And you can kind of use this angle brush to your advantage. It's got a really smooth line. You can see how crisp it makes that line when you kind of use the angle to your advantage. You can go nice and slow and steady and make it nice and crisp. All right, that is looking so good. And I love that in um, some of the other steps, you'll show us the shading specifically mm -hmm. for the... Yeah, definitely. We're going to go in with some details um, to make it look like there's some shadows and highlights and make it look like there's a real, you know, three-dimensional seed sitting in there. We still have no great avocado recipes oh, in no, the comments. On, Just guys. saying, <laughs> let us know. <laughs> we need those. We've been, ever since we saw this painting, we've been craving guacamole. I love this comment from Mary. Thank you for joining us. This is making her want to paint again. Oh, yay. So that's great, Absolutely Mary. Do it. Go get some folk art paints and get back into it. Okay. So I'm going to switch back to my, I cleaned off my um, 3 fourths inch angle, and I'm going to switch back to my half inch angle. And I'm going to start putting some um, shadows into it. Okay, so I'm gonna put some olive green, I'm trying to remember my steps here. Some olive green onto my canvas, just about a dime's worth. And I'm going to load my, like I said, my half inch angle brush. I'm gonna load it with the olive green. Sort of a crisscross motion to make sure I have a nice amount on there. And what I'm going to do first is, again, I'm going to use the um, shape of the angle brush to my advantage. I'm gonna start right here. We're gonna create the shadow. It's gonna be a, sort of a crescent moon shape right inside the avocado. I'm gonna start there and I'm going to sort of hold it upright and then I'm gonna drag it and that's gonna sort of create that C shape right inside. So you can see, I'm gonna show you if you wanna start there and then drag it down. And you can see my paint underneath it was a little bit wet, but that's okay. You can go ahead and wipe it off and we're gonna do it again just to make sure we got that nice dark olive green. 
see how that creates a nice shadow? And then I'm gonna go ahead and just go right next to it and blend it in a little. And I'm gonna wipe it off. I didn't clean it off in water, I just wiped it. Load some more, and I'm gonna do it again on the bottom. I'm gonna start from the bottom and go do a C shape upwards because I'm gonna keep my shadow on the left because the light will be coming from the right. I'm gonna go up just like that. And then I'm gonna go back in and blend it just a little. And you can kind of make it as dark or as light as you want. I like to have really dark darks and really light lights in my painting because that's kind of what makes it really dimensional. But again, it's your painting, so. That's whenever I feel like a painting um, or a drawing that I'm doing doesn't have like a lot of dimension and doesn't really look as 3D as I was hoping it would, it's usually because I've either forgot my really dark darks or my really light lights. When I go back and add those, it usually kind of pops. So that's just a little tip. It's a great tip. And we actually, we have a lot of new painters and just so everyone knows too, use hashtag paint with plaid to share your work with us either here on our Facebook page or on Instagram. Mm. We do our paint nights about once a month and you can always replay them on demand on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. It's also really fun because we cover like tonight's uh, painting is avocados. We have seasonal ones as well from Christmas trees to fall, which is a hint hint that we're previewing <laughs> our next month's painting at the end of tonight. And you can re replay all of them here on Facebook or on our YouTube channel, Plaid Crafts. Yeah, they're all really fun too. I've attended a lot of them. <laughs> so I can say for sure that they were, they were a blast. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add um, the lighter values to these avocado cavities. So we're still using our half inch angle brush. You can see that I cleaned it in the water and I'm gonna go ahead and load it with our wicker white. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use a dabbing motion and I'm gonna go right in the center of each of them. And this is creating sort of a highlight. Um, so now that I've done that, I'm gonna wipe my brush off onto my <laughs> napkin. I'm not going to, I'm not gonna um, clean it off entirely. I'm just gonna wipe most of it off so I can go ahead and blend it into the green. And that just creates sort of like where the light is hitting it and you know, where it's sort of wet on the inside. I'm gonna wipe some of that green off. And I'm gonna take more white on my brush and I'm just gonna add a tiny little white area to the right side of the avocado because that's where it's sort of, the light is hitting and it's shiny. So wherever, you know, your, of course your shadow is going to up the opposite of your highlight. So I'm just gonna add a little white to that side too. Like so, now I'm gonna clean my brush off. Okay, so the next step we're gonna do, we're gonna finally move on to our round brush. This is our number eight round. And this is in the lettering and detail set. Yeah, this is the lettering and detail set. We've moved on to the second set. These are really great. Um, I use these round brushes a lot, probably. I use them even for base coating sometimes, but I just really like the feel of them, but it's kind of a personal preference. So I'm gonna remove the sizing just like I did with the other brushes, make sure it's nice and soft. Um, and I'm going to load some olive green. You should already have some on your palette, but if not, feel free to put some more on. Um, what I'm gonna do to load it is I'm going to sort of twirl my brush on my palette because I just wanna get some olive green on the tip and I wanna keep my brush really sharp. If I start pressing it and moving it around, it kind of, you can see it sort of flattens out and gets rounder. Um, but I want it to be really sh sort of sharp at the tip. So here we're gonna start drawing, um, I'm sorry, start painting our avocado shells. So I'm gonna start from the bottom left and kind of work my way up. I'm just gonna drag my brush right on that line between the pink and green, where I said before that we we're gonna cover up that white gap if you have one. Um, now's the time we're gonna do it. So just drag your brush really um, easily, sort of just lightly across the edge because you want to keep that thin line. And you can see it's not a perfectly clean line and I kind of prefer that because avocados, <laughs> this shells are sort of like wiggly and bumpy um, and this 
it kind of makes it easier to paint that way because <laughs> there's no right way. It doesn't have to be perfect. So you can kind of, you know, use the point or you can press down a little. As you can see, I'm adding, applying some pressure and that creates sort of that um, irregular squiggly line that makes it look like an avocado skin. And I'm just gonna keep doing that with this really pretty dark green. This is our olive green all around the outside. And see, I'm gonna make it thicker there because I wanna cover that white part. But again, I like it because that's kind of how avocado skins are. And then move it around a little, make it sort of irregular. You don't have to spend a ton of time on this because the more irregular it is, sort of the better it looks. And it's the same technique on the rest of the yep. avocados. Okay. Yep. Well, everyone at home is finishing that. Let's take a look at what our friends yeah. right here at Plaid are doing. So let's take a look. This is what we're painting tonight, everyone. It's peace, love, and avocados. We're having a great time here tonight. So we're gonna take a look at what our friends here at Plaid are doing. Look at all these avocados. So guac and awesome. That one guacs <laughs> my world. Look at this. I love Chelsea, the renegade rebel going on. <laughs> Not the pink. I like it. I like it. Uh oh. Rebel number two. Uh oh. <laughs> Rebel in training. <laughs> These are looking so awesome. Ben, let's check out those avocados. Those are looking so good. So good. We actually also have a painter, just a special hello to Phyllis and Tessa, who Tessa's 10 years old, painting tonight, which is really fun. So, we're, Ben, that's looking awesome. All right, that's looking so great, Jesse. Thank you. And everyone is finishing their avocado their, skin, the exterior skin, skin, shell. I don't know. Shell? <laughs> you <Yeah>. tell me. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of uh, discussion over what was the correct terms for all of the the anatomy of an avocado when we were practicing right. this painting. <laughs> we weren't really lot, sure. A lot of avocado terminology. Yes, I know. We were we were googling it. So I I'm mean, pretty sure it's shell. Enough people in the world love the avocados enough to have National Avocado Day. So. Exactly. If you know the correct terms out there, let us know. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> We'd love to hear it. So you can see I'm just sort of going through and I'm adding all of the outsides. And this is really when our avocado sort of starts coming together because there's no more white on our canvas. That's kind of in my opinion when the painting really comes to life is when you finally like fill, there's not an untouched portion of the canvas. That's when it really starts to come together and look like, starting to look like a finished painting. Um, and again, if you're, if you're getting too much paint on your brush, you feel like it's getting heavy or it's getting too round, too bulky, go ahead back on your palette and just give it a twirl or even wash some of the, the paint off in water and sort of start fresh, you know, with a fresh twirl of this olive green so you can get that really fine line. And again, I like it because some people are sort of intimidated by painting, you know, thin lines. But since an avocado is so, um, so it's such an organic shape, we want it to be sort of messy. So it's perfect for people who don't like drawing straight lines. Okay. So now that we've done that, we've got I've got all of my avocado shell, the um, outer shell on there. I'm gonna go ahead and wash my brush. And we're going to start painting the inner shell of our avocado. And that's going to make it look a little more lifelike. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to my half inch angle brush because when I'm going to mix paint, I don't like using the round because it just sort of mops up the paint and it gets really full and sort of messy. And this is much easier to just sort of mix in a side to side motion. So I'm going to get some burnt sienna. I'm going to add a little bit more to my palette because I've used most of it. And we also are going to use a tiny bit of our citrus green, which is the um, middle green that we have. So I'm gonna take some burnt sienna, I'm gonna go right here. Hopefully you guys can see. And then I'm gonna take some citrus green and I'm gonna start mixing those two. You can see I'm doing kind of a side to side motion. And so I'm sure you guys know this, I don't need to tell you, but when you mix red and green, you get brown. So this burnt sienna is a very reddish brown. And then of course we've got our citrus green so that's giving us sort of a lighter brown, a lighter brown color. And this color I think is perfect because it to me is the exact color of an overly ripe avocado, which is kind of what we're going for right here. So now that I've got my paint just the color that I want, I'm gonna go ahead and wash off my half inch angle brush because I'm actually gonna be painting with my round brush right now. I just was using that for mixing. 
So we're back to our number eight round. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did for the outer um, shell. I'm gonna use that twirling method so I can get some on the tip of my brush. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna go just inside the outer shell, if you can see that there. And that gives it some more value um, and some more color, a little more detail. Because if you wanna see in our, you can see in our original photo, this, it's got that sort of brown layer just outside of the hard shell. I mean, just inside of the hard shell, excuse me. So we're painting that in. The more details you put in, the more realistic it will look. So just make sure you get that really thin line. And I'm kind of overlapping my olive green layer. You can see if you mix it together, that's fine because it's sort of one, one thing. Just go ahead and put that color in. See, I'm kind of I'm kind of switching around all over. I don't really start from any point when I'm painting all my avocados. I like to kind of keep it interesting. <laughs> And if your um, mixture is starting to dry out a little or if you're running out and you feel like you haven't mixed enough, you can go ahead and mix more. Um, and, nor and for a lot of times when you're mixing colors like that, it would be a concern that you know, you'd be afraid that you couldn't mix that exact color again to match it. But since again, avocados are so organic and all the colors are so different in them and they change so much, if the brown is a little lighter or darker on, from one avocado to another, that's okay because no two avocados are the same. You just wanna try to get it as close as you can. I think it would look odd if they were all the same, right? Yeah, exactly. There's no twin avocados out there. I'm, maybe there are. I don't <laughs> maybe know. Maybe there are. Let, let us know. Again, I'm not an expert. <laughs> I don't think there are. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and mix some more because I'm running out a little bit. So I've got my burnt sand. I'm just going to stick with this brush for time's sake. Oh, that's looking so good. Thanks. Some burnt sienna and my citrus green. John, thank you for the guacamole recipe. Oh, finally John, we got one. He promises it's really good. <laughs> it also, be. Linda loves to mix avocado with salsa mix oh. and chopped onions. That sounds really good. That's a really good idea. Put water on my brush. Yeah, I feel like this is our first paint with plaid involving something food related. Yeah. We love food here at plaid in right. general. Well, actually we did do the pineapple. Oh, that's yeah, true, that's true. Pineapple. That was my first paint night. That was so fun. That's true. So our second fruit. Our second one, yeah. <laughs> it seems to be a summer thing. All things that can be made into salsa. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pineapple salsa. Tomato is next. No, guacamole. We'll do tomatoes <laughs> next month. No. <laughs> Just keep adding it. Got a lot of avocados to paint here, people. Okay, so I'm gonna try to finish this up. Okay, finally. We've got all of our skin painted, the shell of the avocado. We're gonna start accenting the seed of the avocado, which is kind of the fun part. This is Ooh. when you start getting to do a lot of the dimensional stuff. Let's get my brush nice and clean. So I'm going to, actually I'm gonna stick with my round brush. You can see I cleaned it off, my number eight round. Um, I'm going to grab some of my citrus green. I'm gonna load my brush with that. And I'm gonna go right under the avocado. I'm gonna do a similar C shape like I did for these shadows, but I'm gonna go just under the, under the seed on the green part where it's kind of lighter. I'm gonna um, not put a lot of pressure and then I'm gonna push down and pull up to create another sort of crescent moon. So you can watch my, my motion here. I'm gonna start here and then I'm gonna push down and then I'm gonna pull up. And I went kind of rogue there so we can just fill it in. And this is creating a nice shadow that our seed is casting on the rest of the avocado. Okay, so we've got a nice green shadow there. And then I'm gonna clean my brush off. I'm still using my round. And then I'm gonna grab some of my olive green, which I still have on my palette. 
I load my brush up and right above my citrus green shadow, I'm gonna stay on the green part and I'm gonna do the exact same thing, a little bit smaller, so sort of echoing that line with my olive green. So you can watch me push down and then pull up. And that's creating sort of the drop shadow for our avocado seed. This is the shadow that the light is coming down from above and it's casting onto the rest of the fruit. And just clean it up a little. So I have that nice avocado sha seed shadow. Clean off my brush. And then the next thing I'm gonna do <clears throat> is I'm gonna grab my half inch angle brush and I'm going to um, mix some burnt sienna and olive green. So I've got my burnt sienna here. I'm gonna go there some room and I'm actually gonna grab some more olive green because I just used that all up in my shadow. <laughs> I mean, paint makes a funny sound. It's okay. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to do about one to one ratio and I'm going to mix the burnt sienna and the olive green together and what this is going to give me is a really beautiful rich dark brown because again like we said before red and green egg brown so we've got our dark green and our dark red and I actually want mine to be a little bit richer I want it to be darker so I'm going to add the green and that's going to make it less less of a red brown and see there that's really pretty add a little more I want it to be nice and dark. Okay, so now you can see, sometimes when you mix, you kind of get like too much paint on your brush. You don't want that much when you're painting. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get as much off as I can onto my palette, but I'm gonna wipe it off my paper towels just because I don't want that much on there. It gets messy. So now I'm gonna load my brush back up a little. <clears throat> we're gonna go to our seed, and we're gonna do the same sort of seed motion that we did, but we're gonna do it on our seed, and that's gonna create the shadow that's on the bottom of the seed. So we're gonna start here, and we're gonna do a swooping motion down, and then go back up. And if you want it to be a little darker, you can go back in. Create that swooping shape. And then I'm gonna go ahead and blend mine in a little. I don't want it to be so harsh of a line. Oh, I got a lot of paint on there, that's okay. And this seems like a great use for the angle brush. Yes, yeah, exactly, Deanne, I'm glad you said that. This is the perfect use of the angle brush because you're really letting the brush do the work. These shapes aren't really as um, intimidating because it kind of, that's just the way the angle brush wants to brush, you know? It creates those nice sort of C shapes. Let's smooth that out a little. My shape got a little weird here. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna clean my brush. So now I'm gonna mix um, a little burnt sienna and citrus green. This is the same one that I used for the inside of the shell, this sort of brownish green color, and I have some in my palette already, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. But if not, we just, if you remember, we mixed um, half burnt sienna and half of our citrus green, which is our medium green. And what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna load it on my brush. I'm gonna start at the top of my avocado seed, I'm gonna hold it right here. You can see I'm holding it upright. I'm gonna touch it down and I'm gonna drag it down to the right. And then I'm gonna go back to the top, put a little more paint on my brush, touch it down and drag it down to the left. And that creates sort of a highlight at the top. It's sort of a V shape right at the top of our avocado. And that's again where the light is hitting it. Remember the light is sort of coming from the upper area, upper right side, that's gonna be lit up. <clears throat> I'm gonna, I clean my brush, but actually we're gonna go back and use this same color. If you need to mix more, feel free. Our burnt sienna and citrus green. I'm gonna take this color and I'm gonna just dab some in the middle, right in the center of the pit. And then I'm gonna clean my brush off a little and dry it. And I'm gonna blend that in. You can add some more. I sort of pulled some paint up there because it wasn't dry all the way, and that's okay. So I'm gonna go in and add some more burnt sienna to cover that up a little. My paint was still a little tacky, so when I'm blending with the water, it just kind of pulled it up. So you can see I just have a little light patch in the middle, and we're gonna build up to the lightest light. So we've got our, our darkest dark, and then our medium, we're working our way up to the light, and then we're gonna add white at the very end for our final detail. 
Okay. Great comment from Sarah. She loves yeah. this because it's teaching her about shadowing. Awesome. I'm so glad. Yeah. It, I think a lot of people are intimidated by trying to paint lighting and stuff, but it, it actually is really simple. Okay. So we're going to switch to our eight inch round and I'm going to load it up with some yellow citron. I'm going to do a similar technique of rolling my brush in the paint so I have it right on the, on the end of it, just where I want it, right where I want it. We're going to take that and we are going to make some highlights on the upper right and bottom left side. So I'm just gonna do the tiniest little stroke here of our yellow citron. And I kinda want the edges to be sharp, so I'm gonna go back up like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom here. And that just kind of gives you another area where the light is hitting it and makes it look more dimensional. All right, now that we've done that, we are going to switch back over. I'm sorry, we're gonna stay with our, um, stay with our round brush. We're gonna grab some white. I'm getting confused about my brushes. We'll do the same thing we, I did before. We're gonna roll the brush into the white and I'm gonna add some more highlights to these guys just to make them really pop. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did, just did with the yellow citron, but I'm gonna do it at the top of here where the light's really hitting it right on the edge so it kind of shows you where is about to dive into that um, cavity, and then we're gonna do it again on the top of here. Kind of cleans it up and creates a really bright highlight on it. So I'm gonna clean off my brush, and I'm going to switch back over to my half inch angle. I'm gonna dab it into some white. And this is kind of the final touch. I'm gonna take it, and remember when we did sort of the dabbing motion in the center of these avocado cavities? We're gonna do the same thing on top of our pit. I'm just gonna do some dabbing motion. I'm gonna pull down a little, and I'm gonna make it a little bit wider in the center. And that is our highlight. And that's our avocado painting. Yay! And Yay. you just sound as your final touch, right? Yes, exactly, that's our final touch. Last but not least, don't forget to sign your work. Um, but you've just painted a group of avocados. Yay! I love guac and rolls. Ones. Yeah. Just had to throw the last <laughs> avocado bun in there. Guac and roll, guys. <laughs> awesome. Yay. Well, thank yes, you so much, Jesse. We are going to take a, again, we just finished painting Peace, Love, and Avocados, which was so much fun. Thank you so much, sure. Jesse. That was awesome and a blast to paint. You yes. totally walked our world <laughs> right there. And just to preview to everyone, our very next Paint with Plaid, we're super excited. We have a very special guest teaching next month's Paint with Plaid. I can't wait. Ba -da -da -da. Pick of the Patch, which is going to be taught by a very, very, very special guest artist, Donna Dewberry, who's the original Yay. creator of the Folk Art One Stroke method of painting. So we're really, really excited to have Donna. Again, that uh, listing is gonna be live on our Facebook page. If you haven't liked us already, please do on Facebook and share any of your paintings with us, your avocados or any of the past Paint with Plaid's nights with hashtag Paint with Plaid. Thank you so much, Jesse. This was a blast, and we hope to see you all next month as well. Thank you so much. Bye.